Hello and welcome. You're watching Big Picture with me, Vishal Dahiya, and today we're going to talk about a very important aspect of this battle against the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is about those families, those children who've been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in terms they've lost uh, either of their parents and in some cases, both of their parents. Uh, now, they do not have any uh, means of financial income. They need uh, support, uh, both financially as well as uh, emotionally. And for these children, the government has uh, come out with a decision to try and help them in the long run and in the short run as well. A uh, number of measures have been announced by the central government, uh, wherein these children will be provided help uh, in their school education, in their higher education, vis-a-vis -vis their health insurance, uh, as well as uh, fixed deposits in their name. And apart from the central government, uh, several state governments have also put in place uh, some of the measures to help such children and such families as well. We'll try and understand what these measures are, what impact it, will it have uh, in terms of uh, helping these children, and what more needs to be done here as this is an ongoing battle. And for more on this, we joined by two distinguished guests. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with, we have with us uh, Dr. K. Madan Gopal. He is a senior consultant health with Niti Aayog. We also have with us uh, Aditi Gandan, special correspondent with the Tribune. Welcome, both of you. Let me begin with you, Aditi, since you keep a tab on all these developments. If you could take us through, uh, you know, some of the key highlights. I mentioned some points, but if you could take us through how exactly will these children benefit from the decision which has been taken by the center and some state governments as well? Right. As you uh, very correctly mentioned that this is a very important step uh, that the country is taking in the interest of these children who have lost either one of the two parents or both the parents or lost their guardians in the process of COVID-19 and naturally they do not have any means of supporting themselves. So as you said, the Prime Minister chaired a meeting on Saturday and some very important decisions were taken. The main among them were that uh, through the PM Cares Fund, which is already in existence, and we know that for COVID care also a lot of uh, financial support has gone from PM Cares. So PM Cares will now be expanded to actually take care of these children who've been affected by COVID-19. Uh, the first important decision is that a special scheme will be uh, drafted uh, to actually put rupees 10 lakh FD against uh, the name of every child who has been affected in the process. And what will be done is that when this child turns 18, after that, every month an interest income will be given to this child uh, for their personal and professional use. And once the child turns 23, the entire lump sum FT amount will be directly transferred into his personal account, his or her personal account. So that is the one big uh, major chunk of the financial support that is to be given. But we must remember that this is a long term plan. The immediate short term plan for children who are less than 10 years age is very clear that these children will be admitted to Kendriya Vidyales, which are central government schools, the nearest Vidyale to wherever they are living. They might be living with some extended family or with some kind of a guardian or friends of the family which has been devastated by COVID. And they can also go to a private school. The government is going to pay for these children in if they are in private school under the right to education norms. As you know that there are right to education norms and the government will take care of not just the school fees, but also the promises to take care of the uniform expenses the expenses for, you know, uh, textbooks and all kinds of miscellaneous expenditure of these children. So that is for children under 12 and for children between 11 and 18. The decision has been taken that they will be housed in any central government residential school. We okay. have a few residential schools which are very good, like Sainik schools are residential. These are central government schools. Then you have Jawahar Navode Vidyales, which are excellent schools and which are actually meant to you know, support children from underprivileged and marginalized backgrounds. So there also these children can be admitted. Plus the option of these children continuing to study in private schools. Suppose they are they are wanting to study in private school will exist. And the government similarly will pay for them under the RTE norms. So okay. these are the three broad categories under which the government of India plans to uh, support these children. And as you said, some states have come up with very unique 
make uh, plans for instance you know tamil nadu has decided to put uh, an ft of uh, 5 um, uh, lakh i'm told in the name of these children and the interest income will start immediately accruing to these children because you see the short term support is equally important we cannot forget the fact that uh, the children would need immediate care and support in terms of finances because you know their whole life has come crumbling down so immediately what do you do uh, state governments have also decided to support these children uh, by financial means uh, ranging from 3000 rupees in some state to about 5000 rupees i am told in gujarat uh, which is a big amount per month some states have decided to support the legal guardians that are taking care of these children so that till the time these children are 18 years in fact Indeed. 18 years so uh, that is when the state will give them some kind of an fd and long term support so you know the bigger part of the story is that a lot of state governments and the center are coming together to respond to this humongous challenge and already structures are in place as you know the national commission for protection of child rights has issued a letter to every state asking the states to upload on the ncpcr website any person any child who has been affected by covid so that the government can first prepare a central registry and Indeed. then these processes can be kicked in it, it uh, that's that uh, clearly explains you know uh, both uh, the short term and the long term aspects of uh, this help have uh, been taken uh, into into note uh, one point which you mentioned out there aditi and i like to uh, take uh, this to uh, dr madan gopal here dr madan gopal uh, obviously uh, aditi has explained the steps in detail but we also need to understand as to what's the exact number or approximate number the registry which uh, you know aditi was talking about because we are still uh, you know in the middle of the battle against uh, covid-19 uh, it's it's not that the pandemic has gone away and there might be uh, you know more unfortunate additions to this list as well so how will this work actually uh, this is very important question uh, vishal uh, this pandemic has taken all of us by surprise that's one thing because the second wave it came out very fast and uh, everybody is everybody is now affected by this including you and me and the people uh, as per the, the numbers are coming because uh, as the things are settling down as the wave is declining so this kind of problems are coming up so there was a tweet uh, which mentioned that around uh, 570 odd children they have been identified and those who have lost their parents and they don't have if you look at the any 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 diseases this is a very big disease i am just citing an example for any family if family has a cancer patient the family is down by at least uh, 30 40 years that means that kind of catastrophe is there the so whatever lifestyle the person is having all the life saving and other thing that kind of catastrophe effect is there similarly for a, a, a for the heart patient if uh, anybody is having a ischemic heart disease you see at the age of 55 60 years if the person is uh, used to certain lifestyle and after that that catastrophe happened and you see that how the family has gone back by 10 20 years mm-hmm. and this is for the children they have not just started their life the children 20 25 years uh, they usually start understanding they start their life at this peak period and apart from that the family structure in the country is also evolved and more or less you are having a single and single extended families as such then what happen if some if the parents one of the earning members or the parent they die then this is a catastrophe for this person one way that support system in the form of financial support is there but apart from the financial support system we have to see how many people are affected that registry will evolve it's too early to say that ki how this registry will work but as the data starts coming it will evolve as we have evolved our uh, other systems you can't okay. be having a ready made system to start with we have some system to start with and slowly and slowly that system will evolve and we will have many numbers but immediately the immediate relief which has happened in the form of a long term that is fixed deposit support to the education support to the the guardians as well as the medical coverage that that point uh, aditi has uh, i think uh, that was left out that was the medical coverage these all the children would be now provided the coverage under the pmj aishman bharat yojana aishman bharat pmj yojana they would be covered and they would be given a, a financial 
uh, this uh, uh, treatment benefits up to 5 lakhs per annum. So that okay. kind of benefit is also extended during this uh, thing. But nevertheless, this is a small step towards uh, rehabilitation of these children and the long way to go. We don't know financial support is very much required to take care of this, but apart from financial support, we have to evolve some system for providing social support to these people as well. Indeed, uh, and and, and we'll, we'll, we'll come to that aspect also, but you, since you spoke about, you know, several families uh, which have been affected, uh, that brings uh, us to the other aspect of the system which has been put into place, Aditi, uh, you know, for such families, uh, there have been certain relaxations which have been made in the EPF for withdrawal rules and ESIC schemes as well. How will that work and, you know, how many people... Uh, approximately might benefit from those decisions as well because it's it's important uh, there are families where in uh, uh, you know the only earning member has uh, uh, been lost by the family uh, to covid but you know the, they they can carry on if they get some sort of financial support in terms of uh, whatever accumulation is there in their uh, you know uh, uh, epf account or withdrawals or some sort of other insurance which is there what are the relaxations which have been put in place this is a very important point that you mentioned uh, now uh, this particular part of the announcement deals with larger mass of people that has been affected by COVID. And as you said, the Employee State Insurance Corporation pension scheme, which is actually meant for employees uh, who die during the course of duty. That scheme has now been extended to cover anybody who has died of COVID. Mm -hmm. So what does that essentially mean is that dependent family members of such people who've died of COVID will be able to uh, withdraw the benefit of pension, which will be equivalent to 90% of the average daily wage that was drawn by the person who has died as per the existing norms. What okay. is important to be noted here, Vishal, is that this benefit will be available retrospectively. So with effect from March 24, 2020 and until 24th March 2022. So you just mentioned that the COVID pandemic is still playing out. So we don't want more people to go away, but just in case more fatalities happen, this scheme has been extended to cover everybody who will be affected until 2022. So that's very important. And the other okay. thing that they have announced is the employees uh, provident fund organization employees deposit linked insurance scheme under which a separate benefit will be granted. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Madan Gopal, you know, are you, uh, uh, pointed out a very, very important aspect uh, of this issue which we are debating and that is uh, not just financial support, but that social support, that emotional support which you're talking about. Uh, and I'm coming back to the issue of, you know, those children who've been affected, uh, uh, you know, worst affected a lot will obviously be the children, even if they've lost one parent. And in those cases, wherein they've lost both the parents. Uh, now, how do we deal with, because there are various appeals on the social media platforms and people are reacting to that as well, in terms of those willing to adopt such children and the rules which are already in place, because there seems to be a bit of a, you know, a need for clarity out here. There are people, you know, uh, do-gooders who want to go ahead and help uh, these children. But how do they go ahead? Uh, how do sh how should they go ahead and, uh, you know, so that they are not in contravention of the law of the land as well? Uh, this is a very important question because uh, in the social media, we are coming across uh, messages saying that the so-and-so child has lost his both, both his parents. And if, if anybody is interested in adopting that thing, we have as a central adoption agency. And if we are coming across that thing, we should be referring that person to that agency. Let it be centralized thing. Because during this time, you are having the good kind of uh, work as well as uh, the other people who are trying to take advantage of this situation. Nevertheless, during this uh, very difficult times, your friends, the circle of that people, they are usually uh, rising to this occasion and they are helping that thing. But it is very important to deal with this uh, scenario. Otherwise, uh, you would be coming across with so many messages. Rightly, it has been now mentioned uh, uh, by the uh, WCD uh, minister saying that if now we have to see that how we curb this thing. Otherwise, you will have many, as the registry is evolving, as the state governments are coming forward, 
they would be having a list of the people who would be in they would be having the uh, local guardians as well if the local guardians are there to take care of that person and the state government is giving money i think uh, in majority of the cases the local guardian is uh, will be supporting this and that kind okay. of mechanism do exist in the country and that kind of tradition do exist okay okay aditi you you would be able to take us through you know uh, the, the details uh, of of what exactly the the law says in terms of uh, the issues with regards to adoption uh, where do we stand what is the correct way to go about it because uh, as dr madan gopal also pointed out social support is uh, as important as financial support for these children uh, these youngsters who are maybe you know in the age group of say 6 to 18 uh, they need to have that emotional social support as well right so it's a very important point that you have raised and i do agree that financial support is important but more important is psychosocial support because these children will be emotionally devastated at this point of time and no amount of money immediate money can ever you know re replace a parent's loss so some kind of a mental health uh, uh, outreach program some kind of a larger national outreach for psychosocial support to these children has to be actually drafted and uh, i must mention here that women and child development minister ms smriti irani did make a mention of this about 3 days ago when she said that initial reports suggest 577 children have been affected due to covid and they've lost their parents these are the numbers that have come from the states mm -hmm. but what i want to largely say is that the law is very clear these children cannot be uh, off hand adopted by anybody and uh, we actually came across a facebook page that was um, uh, you know giving appeals out to asking uh, any kind of family to come and adopt children and was actually putting a price to such children and i must mention that the delhi protection Uh, of child rights commission uh, mr um, uh, mr kundu is the chairperson of the commission this commission brought this matter to the notice of the relevant authorities and the page was brought down but these kind of mal practices will happen because child traffickers have become active and we cannot uh, lose sight of the fact that children are extremely vulnerable and they do need state and centers protection at this point of time like never before it's a once in a century uh, pandemic so responses have to be also extraordinary in my opinion uh, vishal there is something called the foster care scheme which already exists in the juvenile justice act that also provides for adoption let mm -hmm. me mention that in the last parliament session a very important amendment was introduced to the jj bill which will make adoption of children very easy because district magistrates have been given powers of adoption officers this has happened for the first time in indian history because earlier what was happening is adoption order could only be passed by a court and that was taking a very long time mm -hmm. so now district magistrates are in charge of child safety at district level so that mechanism is going to come into play and these children can be quickly placed into adoptions and the state can also play a role there secondly what can happen vishal is once this registry of uh, children is ready you can actually have a stand alone scheme for covid 19 affected children and call interested families who want to foster these children because okay. adoption takes a long time foster care does not require all those kind of legal documents uh, you know social welfare officers child protection officers can come and evaluate families their history and immediately place some of these children who may not have legal guardians who may not have any you know a legal uh, kind of backing or any extended family me members left so such children would need foster care vishal the government will have to think about in terms of foster care for that's a short term measure until a child is adopted okay okay indeed uh, those are very very important aspects and points out there dr madan gopal uh, your views there uh, uh, on 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 this this aspect you know bringing uh, the 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 system uh, or rather tweaking the policies in such a manner that immediate relief in terms of that that uh, social uh, you know support can also be given to these children because as aditi was saying this is once in a century pandemic and we will have uh, to respond dynamically to the situation as we have been doing on other aspects of this pandemic as well yes exactly uh, this is the need of the hour because it's a once in once in a century pandemic and we don't know in which direction it will be having 
it do have a long term consequences even the child he, he might have lost his parents but uh, if he was covid positive we will require a long term support uh, medical support as well so tweaking of the systems uh, as i mentioned earlier that means this was a problem which is now we are encountering mm-hmm. we are trying to find solution the the registrations are happening now we are trying to see that the, how the fostering uh, of the parent scheme can evolve how the state governments are coming how the uptake of the schemes happen it, as a result uh, when the things are evolving it will definitely put uh, in, in, give insights into the policy and the systemic level changes it will okay. definitely throw light into that and as a things evolve and we will definitely have this kind of changes in the community okay one one more one more section vulnerable section of the society which is equally vulnerable as children are is, uh, is senior citizens you know and and there are cases where senior citizens have also been equally affected nobody left to you know uh, fend for them or take care of them they themselves also uh, have been affected by covid pandemic so I, do we have something dr madan gopal are we working on something specifically for this section of the society as well like the decision which has been taken for children who've been affected by this pandemic right now i don't think uh, this is a area where we need to focus now but uh, right now i don't think that uh, there are some talks going on but nevertheless there are other ngos and other uh, philanthropic organizations who are coming forward and helping the senior citizens apart from that uh, the government do have a elderly healthcare program but uh, it has to go beyond healthcare program and talk about the other social security mechanisms as well okay. right now uh, yes uh, yes please uh, yes it is going in this direction only right now uh, not but many talks are there the moment this problem comes i think some discussions can happen around this okay aditi your views there on this section of the society equally vulnerable equally in need of help here right now when we are facing this uh, terrible pandemic yeah absolutely uh, one cannot explain the you know the range of pain and anguish this pandemic has inflicted on several people and of course you know a lot of older people also a lot of older people have died uh, the data from the health ministry tells us that 80% of the deaths have been in the age group which is 60 plus i believe uh, because you know uh, vishal the policy will have to be guided by science and facts on the ground the facts on the ground right now are that a lot of older people have actually succumbed to the pandemic and the pandemic has disproportionately affected the uh, children because a lot of uh, people you know who have in the second wave died have been 40 plus people so i think uh, the government is starting out by uh, supporting the children because children naturally are in no position to help themselves and as far as the elderly care is concerned i believe that's a very good suggestion coming from your side perhaps as the second leg of this program this particular scheme uh, should be extended to look at the older people who've been left with no support and obviously they would have to go to old care older um, age homes and uh, elderly care homes because uh, if they've lost uh, unfortunately all members of their family and there do exist a number of social uh, welfare ministry schemes under which the elderly can accommodated and can be provided some succor okay okay indeed uh, that uh, can be taken care of uh, and uh, hopefully the policy makers uh, will look at that aspect also let's take a quick concluding comment from both of you in terms of uh, let me start with you dr madan gopal what more can be done to help all those uh, you know be it children be it senior citizens uh, or even youngsters middle aged people those who are actually in need of help right now they've been devastated by this uh, particular pandemic uh, both financially emotionally and uh, in terms of getting that social support as well is there anything more which you believe uh, should be done on the ground by the government uh, the center and state both local administrations other agencies involved so one of the important thing which is required schemes are made to making people aware about this scheme and how to connect the people to avail this scheme that's very very important for that lot of communication awareness activities are required right from the ground level to the central level that's the only thing which is required to make this scheme successful and effective okay okay fair enough uh, people should know exactly as to what is being done for them aditi your views 
Yeah, I'll just uh, give a quick to-do list which the government should look at if it wants to really help these children who've been affected by COVID. Please. I have in the course of my reporting met a number of such children who've been devastated and what do they need immediately, Vishal? Immediately they need a lot of legal help. They need legal help to get death certificates of their parents. They need legal help to open their bank accounts. They need support for school admissions. Don't expect, you know, legal guardians and extended families to go out and give that kind of outreach to these children. Nobody has that kind of time today in these times. The very fact that people are ready to keep these children at home is big enough. So the government should actually think in terms of putting up a panel of pro bono lawyers and a panel of pro bono support groups for these children because these children will may not be very big in number. Maybe there are about, you know, 2000 or 3000 children to begin with to handle them and help them with all kind of legal documentation with re respect to their deceased parents will be very important to get school admissions, you know, to get uh, immediate medical uh, checkups who will uh, extend that kind of support to them. And, and even to get the benefits of the this scheme itself. Which even to get the account. benefits. So I think a good suggestion would be uh, the government should be thinking in terms of actually setting up a panel of pro bono lawyers, pro bono uh, counselors and pro bono support group and volunteer people who will pan out once you have the registry ready, contact every child personally with a team that has a counselor because children are not going to open up to anybody. They are devastated. So you need a, a comprehensive support system. Giving money to them is not going to help them immediately. You need a larger support group. And mm -hmm. so you should put up a panel where you have all kinds of multidisciplinary experts to take care of these children and, you know, handhold them into the future. Okay, indeed, uh, fair enough. That also is a very, very important and uh, significant suggestion there coming in from you, Aditi. Thank you so much uh, for your views, uh, Dr. Madan Gopal. Uh, you as well. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing your insights on this uh, important aspect of uh, helping those who have faced the wrath of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, both financially, socially as well, and specifically the most vulnerable section of the society, that's the children. We'll come back again tomorrow with a different topic. Till then, keep watching. Thank you.